that danger, isn't it? Someone overzealous from a point of view of saving the earth decides for the greater good, it would be better to wipe out half of the human race. What, what's your, I'm sure that question comes at you a lot. What's, but what's your view on that? Oh, well, that would be terrible. No, we need to do it voluntarily because no matter what evil scientist comes up with, there will always be a few of us left and we will repopulate with a vengeance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, time for another controversial topic around death. This week we are speaking to Les Knight, often credited as being the founder of the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement, referred to as Vehement, whose motto is, may we live long and die out. Les's life work has been described as aiming at phasing out the human species by non-coercive means. The rationale is that Homo sapiens have caused so much damage to the planet already that the only thing that can restore the balance is for humanity to go extinct. And the only humane way to do that is by refusing to procreate. In previous interviews, Les has vehemently explained he is not a misanthrope, he didn't have an unhappy childhood, and he doesn't think all humans are intrinsically evil. Les has previously stated that taking care of the humans that are already here is a major part of the movement. In this episode, we talk with Les about the impact of human beings on climate change, the biological drive to procreate, the impact of overpopulation on the planet, and societal pressures and stigmas around not having children. Please support the show by liking and sharing this episode on social media. And to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes, please sign up for our newsletter at deathhangout.com. It would also be a massive help to us if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you can do right now by simply clicking the subscribe button. Now, get ready for this episode. May we live long and die out. More and more people think to reduce birth rates and even stop stopped having children. And I've read this paper on The Guardian where you, you were mentioned some people consciously choose not to have children anymore because, because of the harm that we're causing to nature, because how we, we impact the, the climate as well, and how this future looks very grim. For their, for their children, and they refuse to have children because of that. Your name was quoted several times on, on this article, and I'm very curious about that, that you started this movement, your movement, very early, actually, before it was a trend, and I, I, I put this into quotes. So can you tell us a little bit more about that, your movement? Yes, it is a, a, a trend. Uh, it's just amazing, because I've been collecting news articles uh, all along. And all of a sudden in 2018, it was just all over the place. Yes, I've been at this a long time. It's not really my movement. I just gave it a name. I'm sure the idea that we should stop procreating and allow humans to go extinct for the good of the biosphere has been around a while. So uh, it, it got lost. And so by calling it something, the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement, maybe it won't get lost. And, and now it's in uh, news articles and so on. My awareness came around in the early 70s, 1970s. Many people have uh, contacted me and said, I thought I was the only one who thought this way. And I said, oh, there's millions of us around the planet, but most of them will never hear it called vehement. That's uh, just the way it is, <laughs> and, yeah. and long as the idea goes. So this is a, a great change. The people are talking about not having children, which is pretty short-sighted because what we are is creating new human beings. We're only children, you know, less than 20 years, and we live another, you know, 60 years, hopefully. It's a very short-sighted to say, are you going to have children? No, I'm going to have a, a middle-aged man, I think, and we'll see how he does. <laughs> A lot of the problem is we're all talking about children and that has an emotional effect. You know, it's like, well, I love babies and children. So, well, do you like 
elderly who are on their deathbed. Yeah, yeah. I like them too, but we don't think about that when we create a new human being. It's even like from a political point of view, it's so much is about the future and about children. And it's like this sort of mm-hmm. deferred decision making. It's like we'll keep making the decisions for later. It's, it's almost, it's, it's everyone's waiting for this perpetual, this, this sort of perpetual inter- retirement of when everyone gets there. But no one ever gets there because everyone's looking, looking, yes. looking later. It's, yes, they even uh, say children are our future. So like, yes. you know, no, they're their own future. We are our. Yeah. Future. So I mean, you said yourself as well. It's not a new thing. I mean, I did a quick look at your website, and you you were referring to even lots of religious liter- literature going back sort of hundreds, thousands of years that there's there's referred to this just using different terminology. Yes, I think it's, uh, correct. The, the suppose, awareness is there. It, it just uh, gets keeps getting lost among uh, natalist uh, uh, propaganda. And using the word natalist, it brings me to my next question, because uh, a question we had David Benatar from the anti-natalist movement, I'm, I'm sure you, you may have heard of. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> There's a question, question we asked him, and again, it is that I'd be interested in your view. It's that I could, from a logical point of view, in terms of managing that together as a group, as a species, to improve the, our lot for now and for later. So right. mm-hmm. it, it's, it's that danger, isn't it, that someone overzealous from a point of view of saving the earth, decides for the greater good, it would be better to wipe out half of the human race. What, what's your, I'm sure that question comes at you a lot. What's, but what's your view on that? Oh, well, that would be terrible. No, we need to do it voluntarily because no matter what evil scientist comes up with, there'll always be a few of us left and we will repopulate with a vengeance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, after the Black Death in, in Europe, you know, the, the graph just shows us shooting for the moon, making up for all that death. It's like, man, we don't want that to happen again. That's interesting, because again, the, with the Sheldon, uh, Sholomon, um, Sheldon Solomon, that's hard to say this time of the morning, the whole idea of fear of death and uh, yes. the, 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 the need for immortality and legacy is just like, right. well, let's have children and we'll live forever through, through our children, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, so, yes. That's, that's I think that's a big part of people's uh, subconscious thinking. So I, I, was, I was thinking about that because now you're kind of popular you're in, in articles and more people think about that. But still, I, I don't think that these ideas will prevail at some stage. I, I don't think so, uh, you know, because we have this biological imperative to reproduce we have this in our deeply in our gene this is what we are meant to do what's what's i would say maybe very bluntly but what's the use to have this kind of movement what, what do you do you try to achieve with that well we have to have a, a freedom to do it in the first place you know to, to not procreate and uh, hundreds of millions of uh, couples don't have the wherewithal to not procreate even if they don't want to. The awareness does no good if there isn't the wherewithal. Reproductive freedom is uh, pretty much the the beginning of the whole thing. And then there's awareness. Uh, When people are just barely scraping out a living, they aren't going to be thinking about overpopulation. Half the population is barely getting by. If you you approach them and said, what do you think about voluntary human extinction are going on? (laughs) I'm trying to prevent my extinction right now. I don't know what you're talking about. So this is part of the problem. You see, you made, you said there about it's like awareness isn't enough. People need to have to wear with all. It's so what you're doing with your movement will definitely raise awareness. How do you yes. think that will help with the wherewithal? Well, I, I would hope that it then translated into uh, more reproductive freedom because uh, that's the problem we have all over the world, really, even in uh, nations which pride themselves on having freedom to uh, do as we wish. If people don't know that they have the freedom to not procreate, it doesn't do much good. And a lot of people have never considered, I know it sounds surprising, but they have never considered not procreating. It's what we do. You say, what not like, what do you mean not procreate? <laughs> <laughs> I see a difference with David Benatar. The main difference that I see with what you believe is for him, coming to life is suffering. It's real pain, suffering, darkness, scream, you know, like uh, excruciating. <laughs> so that we are like kind of a kind of a debate with him. And he said, well, why would you like to put a baby into, into the world to make him suffer and, and to have an adult suffering? But what I, what I think about when you, with uh, your vehement uh, movement, it's all about, no, it's all about 
protecting the earth, protecting the diversity, protecting the, the animal. It's not about us, it's about them. So they have the rights to live and we are destroying them. So it's, it's, it's a different approach, I guess. Is it, is it correct? Yes, there are plenty of uh, antinatalists in the movement. People have different uh, motivations for being a part of Vima and for not procreating. Yes, that's, that's true. One of the uh, main reasons is that uh, people will, in the future, not have a very pleasant life. And that's slightly different from the antinatalist position that uh, every life born is going to suffer. Today, yes, it's quite likely that uh, the future just isn't what it used to be. You know? So uh, just as a precautionary measure, uh, I think avoiding uh, creating a new human, they don't exist yet. There's no point in bringing them into existence if we can help it for many reasons, not just for their sake, but that is a big one, and for the sake of all the other species on the planet and also for the sake of humanity as we try to take care of uh, and feed and uh, clothe everyone on the, on the planet. It's going to get more and more difficult. It's already 30,000 children die every day from preventable causes. It's just we're not taking care of the ones who are already here. It really seems inconscionable to me to uh, continue creating people we can't care for. I think that's the difference between your movement and David's. It's, it's coming from the same place in terms of reproductive responsibility, if you yes. like. There's, there's a bit more hope in your one. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think there's a fundamental difference I'm picking up here. Is it's like it's, uh, it's not that look, it's it's we're doomed. It's it's all a nightmare. It's like this this is why would you even do it? You're all bad people. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's we don't mean to be bad. Yeah. In, instead, your one is more a case of look. Let's just stop and think about this for a minute. We can actually make it better for us and for all the other species on the planet if we just yes. think a bit more. So use the, the prefrontal cortex a bit more and less of the limbic system and, yeah, and those, right. those, those urges to, to, as you said, that un, unconscious desire that promotes the answer when you say don't pre reproduce, they go, what do you mean? <laughs> what are we going to do then? Yeah. What are we here for? <laughs> right. I don't think we have a, an inborn drive. I, I think it, it is that we have an inborn drive to uh, engage in activities that lead to conception and some that don't, but you know, it's all fun. The idea that we have an instinct to procreate, I, I think is misplaced. We, we have okay. an instinct to engage in activities that lead to procreation. It's removed slightly, which makes it a little bit easier. We have been culturally indoctrinated to such an extent from very early on that we are here to create more of us. So it may as well be an instinct, but I, I don't think it goes that deep. You had something on your website about statistics on that as well. It's like if you you, you add up add up all the times you have the urge to have sex, it's like how many of those times was that was there a, a, an urge to procreate? <laughs> Statistically <laughs> insignificant. Yes. <laughs> I would like to challenge you a little bit because there's a question about, you know, saving the biodiversity of the earth and having like kind of a flourishing planet. At some stage, we had that. We had that, you know, like when we, are, we were hunter-gatherers, you know, kind of, there, there was this kind of harmony with, with nature and with earth. And suddenly with the industrial age and technology and, you know, energy, suddenly you, you, you've seen this population growth, you know, like, like, dramatically growing and having an effect, an impact on nature. So you, you, you're saying, let's go instinct, but why don't we just like be at, at, at the level where we can have an harmony, let's say with nature, like to, to maintain kind of the reasonable kind of level. And, and that's it. Maybe we can go back to this time where everything was kind of in ominous situation. Yes, yes. And, and there are people uh, in the movement considered as well supporters rather than volunteers. And they think the extinction of any species, including Homo sapiens, is going too far. So let's get it down to a reasonable number and, and uh, see how it goes from there. And that, I can't argue with that. that. I'll be dead by the time that happens. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think every one of us, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 really. Y'all carry on without me now. We were down to 10, 15,000 people during the bottleneck about 72,000 years ago. 70, nobody knows for sure. And that's why our DNA is so similar with everybody. So we were down to that very minimal number. But uh, now look, and uh, it doesn't take long to uh, get back to 
uh, where we were. We're such a fecund species. But I think we need to go back even further than uh, the Industrial Revolution, which is, you know, it took off. Even before we became Homo sapiens, uh, when, we, when we got the use of fire, we began uh, adversely impacting uh, ecosystems mm -hmm. and uh, probably causing extinctions, although it's hard to tell back that far. But mm -hmm. that's sort of what we've been doing since we got that technology and uh, kept increasing our tribe, although not much. It just took a long time uh, before mm -hmm. we really you know, hit it big right after the Black Death, the, the graph shoots for the moon. And I was thinking about <laughs> Aven Avengers, the movie, you know, like Thanos, who snaps his finger and reduces the population by half. <laughs> and, and this way you, you, you get resources because the entire argument of Thanos is there's not enough resources for us. So you need to divide the population by two everywhere, and there will be enough, enough resources for everyone. Here, I, when, I, when, I, when I listen to you, it's not about resources. It's not about us. It's, it's about respect for the others, respect for the, the plants, for the animals, for the biodiversity and everything. But some will, will argue that, well, us, human species, we are more important. And maybe, you know, if... Let's say if we have the technology, maybe we can get out of, of Earth and populate another Earth or another system. And then we, we still continue, we still go on. Why choose the Earth? Why choose the biodiversity? Why choose the animal rather than us and us having all the bets on us and try to, I don't know, get all the resources? What, what do you think about this yeah. argument? Uh, we're not the only species on the planet, as you notice, but we're yeah, working yeah. on it real fast. <laughs> 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 will be if we keep this up. But uh, our involuntary extinction is what we are engineering. And so this is pretty much a, a, an alternative to the involuntary extinction. We can't keep pulling strands from the web of life, jumping up and down on it harder and harder and expect it to hold. When it doesn't sure. hold, it's not going to be a very pleasant experience. You know, our, our sights are on the stars, but we're sinking in toxic sludge. So I don't think it's a good idea to even try to uh, head into space with, uh, with our proclivity for destruction. We don't, I mean, maybe I shouldn't say it that way. We don't really intend to. It's just that it's hard to tread lightly with uh, 15 billion feet. I think, I think that's it. As you said, it's, we can expand and go somewhere else, but we're just going to take the same problems with us. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yes. Shift thinking. I think that's <laughs> that's what I'm I'm getting from 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 where it's about. Sure. The Sahara has plenty of room uh, if we want if that's what we're looking for, and it even has gravity we can use uh, and air. But uh, you know, we could colonize that perhaps. But it's missing a few things that we like to have. And we do like our home comforts. It yeah. is nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> It, that's an interesting point, though, isn't it? It's about going to space and colonizing there when the, the, there are places we could do here. But again, it, it feels better to go into space, doesn't it? It feels bigger. It feels like yeah. we're doing more. The, the... Yeah, have you heard about uh, Elon Musk? It's all his reasoning. It's all about that. He says, I think, it's, 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 I think he said it once, but he thinks that the Earth is fucked. He said it, I think. And that's why mm -hmm. we, we need to have not all our eggs in the same basket. So we need to... Reach for the star, reach for Mars, because there's a, a chance that we all go extinct. I, I don't think that he said it like this, but you know, that's, that's his motivation. We have this survival, and I think survival is also a big instinct or big drive that we have as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, and again, it's go back to death, you know, as, as Keith mentioned it earlier, our immortality our, is based on our children of continuing something, is continuing our culture. Imagine if nobody, nobody can read the books that we have created. Nobody can see the things that we have created. Basically, we all disappeared. I think in our head, this is not, it's yes. unthinkable. It's unthinkable. It's something it that is. you cannot even, you, you can see like people, when we destroy a, a, a site, like with a sculpture, everybody go ballistic because this is part of the culture we Everything is, is all the lineage is, is, is coming from there. I think this is the, the fight that we're having internally. And I, even if we're reasoning with our prefrontal cortex, I don't, I don't think that we, we can do it. 
I, you know, to be honest, like reasonably to, to, to say I, I will stop reproducing at the end. You're, you're, it sounds like you're going back to David Benatar here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, so, I'm thinking aloud. Now. The, the fear of death could be a, a large reason that people want to procreate to cheat death and say, well, I'm going to die, but my offspring is, is not going to die. You know, it, it, it maybe doesn't have to be their specific DNA, but usually people prefer that, but they want to have a legacy uh, to yeah. cheat. Uh, you know, once people get beyond that and start realizing, yes, we are going to go, then it does matter what we leave uh, for other life, maybe not just human life, but uh, we can do the best we can all our life and not add to the, uh, to the numbers of us. I think there was a few points on, on your website I just want to touch on, which sort of link into that as well. And some of them made me laugh out loud. They were brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there's, there, but but there's a serious. There are in in amongst them. There are serious questions as well. There was a, a few I picked out here. Is it's like the reasons given for procreation, the real reasons, and then the yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, this one here wants someone to care for me in my old age. Yeah, the real real reasons: fear of aging, exploitative personality. Which <laughs> like, suggested alternative: save money and prepare for retirement. Be nice to people so they will visit you in the home and build a social network. <laughs> the death one. I'd like to achieve a sense of immortality. Real reason, fear of death and non-existence. And then the other one, accept mortality. Spread memes, not genes. <laughs> there's, there's a load of good ones in there. I'd recommend anyone well, thank you. Check, yeah. to check that, check that page out. It's, it's funny, but it is. I think there are some good questions for us to ask ourselves as well, just in, in how we're living. Yeah. That's the why read, why read chart. I think this is what you do. Is, is you ask the difficult questions. I think even to to think about the future. You know how this future is. The picture of the future is not great, as you said. You know it's very very difficult, and uh, nobody dare to say it. But uh, it seems like it, we will uh, we will face lots of shit. Well, at least the future generations. So I was wondering for you. You know uh, because you decided this at. I think very youngly, you know, and I don't think that you have kids. I think that I've read that on your bio, you don't have any kids as well. So I'm far as I know. Clear. We don't know. <laughs> How does it play out for you? How do you live your life yourself? Having this food, does it impact you socially with your relationships? How, how do you live basically with this idea in mind? Well, yes, I haven't found it to be any trouble at all. Uh, being male, I'm not quite as expected to procreate. Uh, I think women really uh, have a more difficult time with it because they, they're constantly being asked about it. With men, it's like, oh, well, maybe you will, maybe you won't. You know, but but uh, how could you not want to have children? Yeah, it's no problem for me. There is a lot of social stigma on that, isn't there? It's like that there question, the, 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 the judgment if you don't have them, which is, again, it's about shifting that. So not having kids is just as, as meaningful and purposeful a choice as having them. I think that's something, it is. Mm -hmm. again, it's pressure. It's just on your reasons and real reasons, again, and it is, is it's uh, one pressure from from grandparents and stuff the real reason is you're still looking for um uh what's the word you're still parental uh parental, parental approval yes mm -hmm. approval yeah it's uh, and again it's recognizing where we, we, we do that so if we do have children it's like are we are we putting pressure on it's like that's Mm -hmm. That's our own fears and stuff that we are projecting onto onto to other people. That's one of our and, bumper stickers. Is uh, our, thank you for thinking before breeding. Yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> That's the problem. What can you say? Like, if you had like a bunch of people, like you know, that can listen to you, what would you tell them? to you know convince them that they don't need to breed anymore they don't need to have children what would you say to them well it depends on the person but i don't think i have ever convinced anyone who wasn't already leaning towards it this is okay. an awareness that people really need to come to on their own and so i prefer to listen to people first when I'm talking with this, about this and uh, see what their orientation is and, you know, nudge them along a little bit. But I, I have quit many years ago trying to bludgeon people over the head with this and say, you can't, you got to stop doing this. <laughs> you know, they will when they're ready. 
And if they aren't ready, maybe their offspring will. We can lead a horse to water, but we can't make them drink. Yeah, I just think on that, in terms of that convincing them, just to, just to, it's still part of the same question here. But from this discussion, what I get quite strongly is it's not actually about where with antinatalism it is. It's not about wiping out the human race. It's about getting it to a level which links into what Olivier said about to a level where we can work with the ecosystem and everyone, all the species on the planet get to live and work together. Do you think having the name extinction in the title of your movement confuses that? No, I, I, that really is what the idea is, is for our homo sapiens to completely go to extinct. Go. Yep. Oh, yes. so oh, certainly. As long as there's one breeding couple, look out. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So your fear is if, if you leave any of us left, yes. then we, it, it's inevitable that we will end up back to where we are now. Yes, although our gene pool will be pretty weak at, uh, with, with just one, you know, Adam and Eve. But, well, yeah, uh, but yes. I mean, you don't believe getting it to, you don't believe there is a manageable level. It will no. just, it will, it will cycle. Yes, correct. And, and what for, really? We've had our, our uh, time, and uh, we're wiping out so many other species. You know, what's one more going? It's just because it's us, we have this nostalgic feeling about it. <laughs> so you don't, don't think we're capable of actually learning from the mistakes and doing it and getting it to a level where we could do it? Just because we never have doesn't mean we never will. And I think we should give it yeah. a good try. But we're not going to do it with 8 billion people. We're going no. to have to turn that around for me it's like the extinction bit i think is the it's it's almost like when that's in there the all the other good points again valid points things for us to think about living better i think when that's the end game people throw the baby out with the bathwater and we right. reject the love yes. and i think that's <laughs> the danger so i think there's a lot of good stuff in there i think but i think that's almost it's once that's there that what i do think is the biological imperative to survive rather Seems like it Yep, it's 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 that that rejects everything and people the fingers go in the ears and I think we, we can miss the lessons. <laughs> that's just that's my final thoughts on that. That does make it a challenge, but we yeah. don't seem to have any problem with uh, millions of other species going extinct that are, you know, what's one more? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but so now it's thicker, I think thicker than <laughs> What's one more? <laughs> yeah. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Again please support the show by signing up at deathhangout.com or clicking on the subscribe button on your screen.